here's our unit ratio technique lesson for volume examples. So in this situation, we have a motorist who has purchased 37 and a half liters of gas. And we want this liters of gas converted to gallons. And we want it specifically imperial gallons. So remember, liters, metric, gallons, imperial. Well, there's our imperial system. So start with our given value in units. So volume is 37 and a half liters. Capital L is the symbol for, li symbol for liter liters. We want an equivalence to convert liters to our desired units of imperial gallons. And we see from our tables of equivalences that one gallon is 4.547 liters. Now watch out on our tables because we do have gallons and U.S. gallons. If it is U.S. gallons, it will specifically say it. If it's not U.S. gallons, then typically it's just the word gallon, and that we can interpret as just regular old imperial gallon. So that's the unit ratio technique, we're the unit ratio that we're going to need to multiply by. And again, we'll have the gallons in the numerator and the liters in the denominator such that our liters will cancel out. Let's see how the units go. Liters are gone, and I'm left with gallons. So just a single step calculation here. Gather our numbers. So very simple calculation, 37 and a half times one divided by 4.546. And we can get our overall final answer of 8.25 gallons. Next example, we have a driveway, driveway that measures 21 feet by 40 and a half feet. We're going to be paving it with concrete and we want to pave it to a depth of six inches. So the first thing to notice here is that we have feet, feet and inches. So we're in the imperial system, but we do have two different types of units. We do want to calculate the required volume of concrete and we want it in cubic yards and cubic meters. So we'll do it in cubic yards first. And we're going to have to recognize that in order to get the volume, well, volume is just basically length, width times height, we're going to need all these units to be the same. So we have to have feet, feet, and feet here. And we should all be able to recognize that, well, six inches is just half a foot. That's not something we have to do a formal calculation for. So let's um, start with our given formula and measurement in units. So there's our 21 feet, there's our 40 and a half feet, and notice how I've converted this to half a foot immediately. So I didn't put the six inches there, I made sure the units all matched, so my volume would be in cubic feet. I look up on my table of equivalents, and I find that, well, in length, I've got one yard is three feet. So again, I can either just look up on my table, because this one is also there, 27 cubic feet is one yard cubed, or I could think of doing what I did in the metric system, and I could take my length and make it a volume by cubing everything. So one cubed, yard cubed, three cubed, feet cubed, and three cubed is definitely 27. Let's use that unit ratio technique now. So our yard cubes have to stay in the numerator, feet cubes in the denominator, so that the feet cubes will cancel. Here's the cancelling out. We started off with cubic feet, we get rid of cubi cubic feet, and we're left with cubic yards. Let's gather our numbers into our calculation. So there's our length, width, and depth. There's the times the 1, and dividing by the 27, so that we are left with yards cubed. For our overall answer of 15.75 cubic yards to two decimal places. Let's do the second part of this question. We did want it in cubic yards, but we also wanted it in cubic meters. So same as before, we'll start with our volume, where we have all the dimensions in feet, 21 feet, 40 and a half feet, and 0.5 feet for cubic feet. We're going to look up on our tables and see if we can find a direct conversion from cubic feet to cubic meters. And we actually do have one of those, so one cubic foot is 0.02832 cubic meters. Let's use our unit ratio. This is how we'll write it. We need the cubic meters in the numerator so that the cubic feet are in the denominator such that they will cancel out. Let's look at that canceling. Feet cubed in the numerator, cancel with feet cubed in the denominator, and we're left with just cubic meters. Let's gather all our numbers together. So there's our dimensions, length, width, and height. There's our 0.02832 and just dividing by one. So our overall answer in cubic meters is to two decimal places, 12.04 meters cubed. 
Last example for volume, we just want to convert one cubic meter to liters. So again, metric and metric. Start with our given value, one cubic meter. Go to our tables or our matrix prefixes, whatever we need to use. And from my tables, I can see that one liter is a thousand cubic centimeters. I can go from my metric prefixes that one meter is a hundred centimeters, and I could change that length, volume, length um, dimension to a volume dimension by cubing the one, cubing the meter, cubing the hundred, cubing the centimeters. And again, where did this come from? Well, centimeters to decimeters, decimeters to meters, two steps, 10 times 10, a hundred centimeters are in one meter. Let's multiply by our ratios. I have meters cubed, so I want to get rid of those. So I'll use this one here that we derived. So meters cubed to centimeters cubed. And now my next one, I can use the top one that I read from my volume category, centimeters cubed to liters. See how the units cancel out. Our meters cubed are gone. Our centimeters cubed are gone. And we're just left with liters gather our numbers and perform our calculation. So I've just got one times 100 cubed divided by a thousand. Don't forget to keep that cube. Okay. That's why we have it over here and you can put brackets around it like I did, or you could forego them if you wanted. Perform that calculation on your calculator and you wind up getting 1000 liters. So one cubic meter is the same as a thousand liters.